multiplying and dividing rational numbers. And this really pretty much just reminds you of the rules. So, and I'm going to put it up here. A positive times a positive equals a positive. A negative times a negative equals a positive. And then they kind of said, remember, if there's two numbers that are the same, they're going to end up being positive. And if you have a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive, your answer will always be negative. So this is kind of one sample and then the other sample. And this just goes, this one kind of reply, combines all the stuff that we've been working on with like multiplying decimals and fractions. So when you're multiplying a fraction, you multiply across. So 4 times 2, you just go straight across. We have two positive numbers. We're going to have 8 over uh, 15. Now, if you could simplify this and you're like, okay, what are the factors? Well, obviously 4 and 2 and 5 and 3. And none of them cancel out. If you had some on top that were the same, you could do that. But your answer is going to be a positive... Um, 8 next um, we have 16 and 8 tenths divided by a negative number so our answer is going to be negative by 4 holes so we know that 4 can go into 16 twice and we know that then we have 4 holes 4 holes can go into four, 16 holes 4 times and now we have 8 tenths, and that can go into there twice. So you should have negative 2 and 2 tenths. Next, so we have two positive numbers again. So just making sure that we're paying attention to that. We have two positive numbers. And so our answer is going to be positive. And I, you can put this positive sign in there if you're just trying to keep track of whether or not you did it or not. I'm sorry, on this one I said 4 goes into 16 4 times and then I wrote 2. So if 4 goes into 16 4 times and I said that right, I just wrote it wrong. Or maybe I didn't. I guess you could rewind it and check. Here you go. So when you're multiplying here, you can actually leave, since these are both positive, you can actually leave out the decimals and then add two decimal places. So 49 times 32. And if you're, depends on how you're doing this, so it's up to you. I do 9 times 2 is 18. And 2 groups, 2 times 40 is 80. 30 times 9 is 180. Sorry, that's not true. It's 270. Sorry. I'm getting kind of tired. And then 30 times 40 is 1,200. And then I can add this all together. So we have 8, 7, 8 is 15 plus 1 is 16, carrier group 10 or hundreds, and then we have 20 or 2, 4, 5, and then we have a group of 1. So we end up with 15 and 68 hundreds. And again, you don't need to put the decimal place in until you get your answer, and then you just see there's two numbers behind the decimal, and I put it over there. Move the decimal over two places. Next, so this is multiplying, and we have a negative sign. So we're going to actually have a negative answer because we only have one negative sign. So we have one negative sign. <clears throat> I'm going to flip the, turn this into, because we're multiplying, and it's a mixed number, so I'm going to turn it into an error. Uh, Improper fraction, multiply and then add. So 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7 over, so I have 7 over 6 times 1 over 4, and I multiply straight across. So 7 over 24. So I have negative 7 24ths. Next. I have division. Now, I don't really know if you remember this, but we talked about using <clears throat> the reciprocal. So you're going to flip this number right here. <clears throat> and so you multiply and then you add. We're going to turn this to an improper fraction. So 4 times 2 is 8. Plus, sorry, 8 plus 3 is 11. So we would have 11 over 4. 
four. And then we have a multiplication, or sorry, a division sign, but we're going to turn it to multiplication and you flip this to two over one. So now I multiply straight across. 11 times two is 22. And four times one is four. Now, again, that's an improper fraction, so I can turn it into a mixed number. And don't forget, this will be negative, so keep that there. And now, if I'm doing this, I can go, okay, how many times does four go into 22? It goes into it five whole times. So four times five is 20. So 22 take away 20 is two over four. And I can divide this both by two, the top and the bottom, just the fraction section part of this, because we aren't messing with that, because we're just simplifying this. So two can go into two once, and two can go into two four times, or two can go into four twice. So we actually have negative five and a half is our answer there. All right, division again with this problem when you're dividing if you're dividing so we have a decimal so I'm going to set that up so this is in front so it's going to go inside if I actually go to solve it this way and I put my 48 and 3 tenths here and my negative 7 so I have a negative and a negative my number is going to be positive so I'm just going to leave that plus up there and so I have negative 7 and negative 48 so 7 goes into 48 six times 7 times 6 is 42, and you would have 6 left over. You bring down your 3. Don't worry about the decimal right now. 7 goes into 63. We bring up the decimal. 7 goes into 63 9 times. So we have a positive number because we have two negative numbers, so our positives, negatives make a positive, and our answer is 6 and 9 tenths. I'm going to go back and circle these because I just want to make sure, again, if you guys go back and look, you can see my work. Next. So we have two negatives. So when we have two negatives, we're going to make sure that we remember two negatives multiplied by each other are going to get a positive number. And then this one, you just multiply straight across when you're multiplying fractions. 9 times 2 is 18. I'll put that over that. And 10 times 3 is 30. So now the question is, do we have anything that could go into both of these? Well, right up here you can see 9 and 9, the common number that they have together is 9, or sorry, 3. So you can divide both the top and the bottom by 3. 3 goes into 18 six times. And 3 goes into 30 10 times. If you actually would have thought about this, because 10 is also 5 and 2, and this is where that prime factorization stuff goes into hand, just so you know. If I were to just break up my numbers into prime factors up here, <laughs> you can cross off one on top and one on bottom if they have it in common. So there's a 2 they have in common, there's a 2 they have in common, there's a 3 they have in common, there's a 3 they have in common. The only thing left is the 5 over the 3, which actually would leave us with what we're about to get, because we can still simplify this one over here. 2 goes into 6 3 times, and 2 goes into 10 5 times. You would actually be left with the same answer. Oops. Sorry. Aggressive pencil pushing, I guess. 3 fifths. All right. Next. So here, division, so we're doing with, you know, we're again, pay attention, we've got a negative and a positive, so now our answer will be negative. And now, again, we have an improper fraction. So we're going to be, I'm going to have you guys be a little bit more mindful, try to simplify before you go too, far, too much further. So 9 times 1 plus 8. So 9 times 1 is 9 plus 8 is 17, which is a prime number, so we're pretty good there. So we'll have 17 over 9, and then divided. But remember, because when we divide a fraction, we're actually going to flip this and do the reciprocal and multiply it by 3 over 1. So then we'll go straight across. 
7 times 13, or sorry, 7 times 3 is 51. And 9 times 1 is 9. So now we have this improper fraction, and we need to simplify that and turn it into a mixed number. 9 goes into 51, and if I was skip counting by 9s, the closest you can get, well, 9, nine times 7 is, sorry, 9 times 6 is 54, and that's too far, so 9 times 5, so which would be 45, so I'm going to put my 5 here, minus the 45, so 5 times 9 is 45, 51 minus 45 is 6 over 9. And now right here, if you look at this, you have a fraction, again, that could be simplified. So we're just going to divide them both by 3. The top and the bottom must be divided by the same number. And we don't forget to keep your negative sign. And so when I simplify this, now I'm going to end up with 5 and 6 goes into 3 twice. And 9, 3 goes into 9, sorry. 3 goes into 6 twice, and 3 goes into 9 twice, or 3 times. She's needing to go to bed. And, you know, just so you know, on your um, worksheet, the answer key shows that there is not a negative sign. There should, in fact, be one. You have a negative number and a positive, and negative times that would be a positive. So we're going to keep this that way. Sometimes you never know what they're up to. And there are people that make accidents, or accidents happen. Okay, next here we have two numbers. They both, this is going to be a negative, this is a negative, and this is a positive. So our answer is going to end up being negative. So we have a negative. And that means, again, I can leave out the decimals. If I'm multiplying 94 times 27, I just need to remember that my place value is going to come in and I'm going to put two spots. So 7 times 4 is 28, 9 times 90 times 7 is 630, 20 times 4 is 80, 20 times 90 is 1800. And I'm going to add that all together, so I have 8 in the 1s, 13 in my 10s, 15 in my hundreds, carry my group of thousands, 2538, 2538, except for I have to move my decimal place, which is really here, two places. So I should have 25 and 38 hundredths. Negative two, a negative 25 and 38 hundredths. And I'm going to circle that. Okay, the last one for right here. And then you guys, I'm going to let you do all this part on your own. Um, we have again a negative and a positive, so our number is going to be negative. And this is how you know, I mean, really, just check all your work Everything else, every other time we've done that. So this one was just an accident. Um, we have to turn this into a improper fraction. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 7 is 15, so we have 15 over 8. And then we have a division sign, and that means we're going to do the reciprocal, which means we'll multiply this by 4 over 3. And we multiply straight across. So 4 groups of 15 would be 60, because 2 groups is 30, so that would be 60. And then 8 times 3 is 24. And when I'm looking at this, the one thing that I recognize right away is that both 60 and 24 are both factors of 12. So if I divide these by 12 to simplify, 12 goes into 24 two times, and 12 goes into 65. So if I was looking at this, how many times now I, I have still have my improper fraction, which remember should be a negative, I am going to see how many, if I have every, I have five pieces and two make a whole, how many times can two go into five? The answer would be twice, remember negative, so twice with, so 2 times 2 is 4, and 5 take away 4 is 1 over 2. All right, nice job. Keep it up and check this math out. Make sure you get your numbers and letters matching up, and let me know what it says. All right, take it easy.